So we have a news article um, titled Trump appointed former secretary advisor to the Secretary of Defense says Russian forces have been too gentle on Ukraine and called Zelensky a puppet. Um, now, I see what the media are trying to do here. Um, for the past four years of the Trump presidency, they try to paint him as a Trump ally, even factually. I mean, Trump had to, to you know, fight those allegations by being super hard on Russia, as opposing sanctions and all sorts of stuff, right? But, you know, whatever. They, the media, that's what they want to paint him on because that's very profitable for them um, as far as, like, uh, for, for their uh, political narrative. Uh, so now they found the guy that says, oh, this guy that has been appointed by Trump says that Ukraine should basically surrender. And uh, the president Zelensky is not accepting reality, putting a whole bunch of people, of his citizens in danger and just basically wrecking the city. Um, now, to be clear, I don't support the Russian invasion. I think it's a disaster. I think it, it's... It only concerns like this whole NATO expansion, while completely unfair. It really probably really concerns the Putin regime. Um, North Korea, nobody's going to invade North Korea, and they only have like one one nuke or something, like two nukes. Uh, nobody was going to invade Russia. Uh, he, I mean, it has thousands of nukes, so it was never going to be like that. But. I think what the whole point of the NATO expansion was their strategy that if there were they keep keep expanding NATO up to its border with a whole bunch of missiles in Ukraine and everywhere, then if there was to be some kind of revolution to break out, then they could they would be in a much stronger stance to do a regime change in Russia. Uh, so it's very dangerous. I mean, I'm not really super dangerous for the Russian people themselves. But definitely dangerous for the Putin regime because they saw what happened in Libya and Syria. Any kind of, you know, any kind of revolution breaks out. The government trying to defend itself. NATO imposing a no-fly zone. Funds the terrorists or the insurrectionists and the, the government is toppled. So basically they're aware of that playbook. And I guess they're really worried. Um, now, United States... I mean, I would think that the United States military defense, they want to bog Russia down in Ukraine, cause as much casualties as possible, drag this on forever. They could give a, they could give a shit about how many Ukrainians die, how many buildings are flattened. They just want to embarrass Putin and cause a, like a regime change again. This could be his Afghanistan, um, just how Afga America got bogged down in Iraq and Afghanistan, the same thing. They want to keep arming the opposition. But from a, a purely Ukrainian self-interest, is it is it worth it? Is all this loss and uh, complete destruction of cities worth it? I know this could be a crazy idea, but what if... Ukrainians just didn't resist in the beginning. Now, of course, the Russians trying to come in as a very tactical, just a tactical strike to take out some military, and then they thought the president would flee, and then they would have a regime change in Ukraine. And I guess they were angling for a, a neutral, neutral Ukraine, or put installing a Russian puppet or something like that. Um. And with that, I mean, obviously, like a dictator or a big, uh, big bully next your neighbor, is not ideal that they get to de decide certain things or like force you or whatever. You should be, you know, you're your own independent country. You should be able to do whatever you want. But in all fairness, America though doesn't do that anyway. I mean, America's a great power. They didn't let Russia or the Soviet Union put nukes in in inside of Cuba, even though. Well, Cuba is an independent country. They should be able to host whoever's military they want. Of course, whatever that sounds good, the people with power just won't allow that to happen. And uh, the reality on the ground is Russia has a lot of power. I wouldn't say a lot of power on the world, but just a lot of power, at least on its border. So why would you burn Ukraine to the ground instead of just 
turning Ukraine into a neutral country. Uh, it, I would say if if they wanted to oppose some kind of socialism, communism, then yes, then you, it would completely ruin everything. And it'd be like slavery. But if their agreement could be that Ukraine, as long as it's like, obviously, as long as it's friendly, it's not going to be a NATO country. It's not going to host any kind of like uh, missiles or NATO missiles or defense missiles or anything like that. They could have a whatever economy they want. Then even even if they, they, the government is undemocratic, I mean, you could have a lot of prosperity. I mean, there's plenty of countries around the world like uh, the South Koreans uh, was like a military dictatorship. There's a bunch of places that it's not democratic. But as long as they have property rights, free market courts, this country could be really prosperous. And I think would, in, in the long run, either if, if, they, if they stay and fight and uh, a Russian puppet gets installed or they keep with their quote-unquote democracy and just have this super corrupt system and, and you know the government in there right now, in the long term, I think they were having the same outcome anyway. Um, but let's get into the article here. So ex-Trump appointee called Ukrainian President Zelensky a puppet and said Russia has been too gentle. Well, yeah, in the beginning, of course, Russians did just want to spook the Ukrainian military and the government just for it to, for it to leave, for it to just surrender. They wanted to win the hearts and minds. I'm sure the same thing that Americans wanted to do in Afghanistan and Iraq. But after, obviously, the Ukrainian military is outgunned, so they started to hide in, inside the population. And I could see videos of, like, even just, like, regular cars throwing, uh, riding by Ukrainian, uh, Russian tanks and throwing Molotov cocktails. So basically, like, the insurgency embedded themselves inside the population. So now, when... Russia fires on them. They would say, "Oh, you're you're hitting. You can have crazy graphic photos like you're hitting people." It's like, well, fuck, man, <laughs> that sucks. Colonel McGregor said the conflict could have ended days ago if Ukraine had uh, acquiesced to Russia. Zelensky has rallied Ukrainians to defend their country against invading Russian forces. Uh, so yes, yeah, so there's an interview on the Fox Business. Um, McGregor then laughed when Vale Varney asked if he thought Zelensky was a hero for standing up and fighting. I don't see anything heroic about that man. I think the most heroic thing could, he could do right now is come to terms with the reality. It's not a bad thing. A neutral Ukraine would be good for us and Russia. It would create a buffer. That frankly both sides want, but there's I think told, but he's I think being told, I think to hold on and try to drag this out was tragic for the people, and have to have to live through this. I don't know about this guy's words that. I mean Russia wants a buffer from NATO that's for sure, but uh, doesn't seem NATO. Or America keeps keeps pushing NATO. They have an open door policy, and anybody can join. And a lot of countries are starting, you know, have have been joined uh, ever since I guess Russia got out of Germany or something. They keep adding and adding and adding, keep uh, moving uh, closer to Russia. Of course, warmonger Liz Cheney uh, definitely not not feeling it. Um. Conservative in recent years had become one of Trump's ardent critics. Saturday blasted McGregor for his comments. Um, we will not send our forces to fight, but we are urging Ukrainians, but we are urging Ukrainians to die pointlessly in a fight they can't win. We are going to create a far greater humanitarian crisis than anything you've seen, if it doesn't stop. Kind of appeasement talk that Colonel McGregor, who should know better when the when he was in the government, he was the one who was advising Trump to pull all troops out of Germany. That pr uh, projection of weakness is that what made Putin think he could move into a sovereign country like Ukraine. 
While congressional Republicans have overwhelmingly lined up behind Zelensky, Trump last month described Putin's justification for invading Ukraine as savvy, genius, in our well. Pff, th this is a, to me this is such a biased article because, I mean, Trump keeps flip flopping either way, and yes, while he did say the savvy and genius, he uh, he said some other super inflammatory stuff that we're going to bomb Moscow and this and that. Well, he, like five minutes later, he took a, like a hawkish, hardline stance and. Well, just to make them look bad, they're not going to put that in there. Former Vice President Mike Pence, during a Friday speech at the Republican National Committee, donors seem to take a swipe at Trump over this issue. There's no room for in, in this party for a, apologists for Putin. Zelensky has been applauded throughout the world as a hero for remaining in Ukraine, and Russia barrels down on their uh, invasion despite threatened warnings that he's a target for assassination attempts. So basically, uh, this is this is a really screwed screwed up situation. I don't even know how Russia could. I mean, even even if they thought, if, if they made a miscalculation, how they could save face. Let's say they <laughs> they made a huge miscalculation. The Ukrainian uh, uh, resistance is tougher than they thought. Their military is shittier than they thought, and you know their supply lines and all sorts of logistics is screwed. Well, wh where's the uh, Where's the on-ramp, off-ramp to de-escalate? De uh, definitely, America is talking to Poland, and Poland's going to start sending like MiG fighters and stuff like that. And I'm sure Turkey was sending all sorts of drones, which you can see by what they're doing. They're not, America and the West, they don't want to just de-escalate. De uh, they want to bog Putin down. Uh, regardless of the casualties on both sides, frankly, you know, like on the Russian side or or the Ukrainian side. Um, and in, in, in that case, yes, U.S., is, I mean, Ukraine is kind of like a puppet. It's like a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a, they're using Ukraine as a human shield, you know, for, for their, for their, you know, like, you know, their, for their war. Um, so, Obviously, Putin cracking down on the media, people getting threatening, like, prison terms for reporting fake news and all this. I mean, this is, it's not even good for the Russian people. Most of the Russian people don't know, I mean, probably don't support this shit. Um, Amer Although, I mean, people get patriotic, so I remember how patriotic Amer Americans were when uh, we, um, incurred into other people's countries like Iraq and Afghanistan, which were total sovereign nations and had nothing to do with uh, the 9-11 or anything like that. So, I mean, if it just seems rich, like I, I, I was riding a motorcycle down a, uh, like a, um, a well-to-do neighborhood. And I noticed that a lot of the, uh, some of the, like really nice houses that had like U Ukrainian, they were flying Ukrainian flags in the front of the house. You know, the Black Lives Matter flags went, came down and now we're on to a new, like the, the, the Ukrainian thing. So I think people are so, so like the media has got people so brainwashed, so manipulated. Um, it's like just now it's like this new fad. We've got a Ukraine, got to stand up and fight and give it, you know, you know, no matter what. Um, at the end of the day, it's not really America's issue to inflame tensions. I mean, these are neighboring countries, mostly the same people that speak the same language for the most part. So they got to learn how to, to, to live with each other. And the best thing forward would be to Ukraine just completely just become a neutral state like Switzerland and put everybody at ease.